Hi everyone. Um, so I wanted to share what God freed me from. Um, and I tend to forget the, this testimony and it's very, very huge. So when I was around um, in sixth grade, there was a transition where we moved from Portland to Happy Valley and I um, started going to a different middle school. And um, I started hearing, a, and I grew up in a Christian home, you know, I went to choir and Sunday school, you name it. And I started hearing like kids cussing and uh, saying bad words. So when I would come home, it would replay, it would replay and replay in my mind. And then it started getting so bad that um, it would be like, any cuss word you can think of against even like God and blasphemy, which when I read that verse, I was always test uh, like really afraid um, in the Bible, you know, and, um, but little did I know this is just the enemy. Like it bombarded my mind. I was so in fear. I was full of fear as a child and I couldn't tell anybody. I couldn't share this with anybody because I was so afraid. And I, for sure, I was thinking I will never ever be saved. God's not going to forgive me. I will never go to heaven. And I could not open up. And I remember this one time I opened up to one person. This one person said, wow, I have the same thing. And I was like, wow, I'm not alone. And uh, we prayed about it. And that was pretty much it. But it kept kind of like haunting me. It's still, when I got married, it still kept going on and on. And um, after a while, even like when I would have my babies postpartum, um, sleep deprived, I would be miserable. I would have different thoughts and um, I didn't know what to do. I wasn't taught like how to rebuke that, you know? Um, I thought it's all my fault. It's it's me. It's your. That's it. Like there's no hope for you. And I remember a um, few years even back, I was married already probably hmm, probably over even a decade because of things happened in my past with my marriage and this and that. Um, I would still struggle, you know. And then I started attending a church with worship, with uh, praising. And I remember looking at the guy in choir and I was like, I want that. I want to cry. I want to feel you, Jesus. You're real. I know you can forgive me. I know you could free me from this mind terror. Um, all these thoughts, like they're not me. They're not me, God. I need freedom. I want freedom, Lord. And um, I would just pray and pray and pray. And in singing, as I sang in choir, I uh God started just releasing a uh, freedom, freedom. I felt freedom in me. And little do you know, those thoughts disappeared. They just disappeared because when I kept doing things for the Lord, I started uh, just being busy doing backpacks for orphans or praying for women and, and, you know, just feeling people's pain because I've been through pain. I know what that is. And so um, just running after Jesus and laying everything at his feet. He promises that his yoke is easy and his burden is light. So we need to give it all to him, right? That was some heavy stuff. And um, that I carried alone literally since I was a teenager, a young girl. Plus, I got married at 17. So I was, you know, struggling and suffering inside by myself. Sorry if my phone's a little shaky. But, and then, um, so praise God. Also, like, the enemy's really tricky. He's just so dumb. He tries to, if you're free from one thing, he tries to give you something else. You know, so that's why we're not supposed to even let him, like not even a foothold. He tried to uh, give me fear in anything. Like I would be scared a tree would fall on me at night or, uh, but, you know, somebody would come in or um, you name it. There was a tsunami in Japan and I was so afraid that I packed up my luggages because in the news, news, turn off your news, you guys. It's demonic. The enemy wants us to be in fear and so afraid of everything. I would watch the news. I would pack up my luggages because it says it's going to come to the Pacific Coast, like to Oregon where I lived. And um, I would be so terror, like seriously so scared that I would have two luggages already packed up and ready. When there would be fires, I would be packed up. My car would be packed up. I don't know where I would go, but telling you i was just so full of fear uh when they were saying 
you know, stock up on food. I would spend thousands of dollars, guilty, right here, um, on food. And then what? It, like, expires, you know. Obviously, I ended up giving it away, most of it. But, you guys, it's such a free feeling when you are not in bondage. You don't, you just rely on God. He's never going to let his children go. I love this verse where it says, Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body. What you will wear is not your life more than food and your body more than clothes. Like, so good. This is so true. And then another one, that was Matthew 6, 25. And then there's another one where it says, Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? Matthew 6, 27. We cannot add another hour. Why are we worrying? Why are we in such fear? We're wasting so much precious time when we can just enjoy life. You know what? Someone's hurting you. Get up. Get dressed. Go. Do something. Go hug somebody. Go buy somebody a coffee. You don't know what that person next to you is going through. I get emotional because we are so self-centered. And I'm speaking for myself. How many years? I'm already married almost 19 years. But wow. I'm trying to think. What have I done? I mean, I'm trying to do so much. We're a vessel. We need to love people. We need to love ourselves in order to love others. We need to be Jesus. His hands, his feet. Ask him. If we don't have that love, ask him, tell him, tell him how you feel, tell him what you want, what you desire, and he'll give that desire to you. And then I want to 